Good afternoon, friends. Stephen Bernoon here with Israeli News Live, and uh, we're going to be touching on some of the news issues here going on with Ukraine, a little bit about Taiwan uh, as well, and uh, just a little bit of other stuff, too, going to share with you. Uh, and this video here, I've kept terrible things quiet. Elon Musk zone channel there with uh, uh, once again with uh, Tucker, uh, Tucker Carlson there. So uh, mainly it's because he's touching on a few things here that are things that we've brought up in the past. And I just wanted to share that with you now that he's coming a little bit more clean about what's going on. Uh, also, too, I want to look at this a little bit from the biblical aspect. And uh, I think I'll start that part here first. I have had people ask me about that. Uh, you know, in fact, one person had commented. They said, you know, Steve, you used to really go into the biblical aspect of the things that are happening in the world today. And because we have these wars that are happening, especially over in Ukraine, NATO getting involved, specifically the NATO terminology, something that I ran across in the Hebrew Matthew on this. I was looking at the wars and rumors of wars aspect. Uh, verse 6, as you as for you, when you hear of wars and a company of hosts, beware lest you become foolish, because all of this will occur, but the end will not be yet. Now, interestingly, I should say interestingly enough, <clears throat> the verbiage on that is a little bit different in Hebrew than what we have right here in the translation. Uh, I believe it is in the, in the regular uh, Greek Matthew there. You know, it's, uh, you know, there would be wars and rumors of wars, but be not trouble for the end is not yet. Actually, it do, what it does say is, uh, it says right here at the very beginning, when you hear of the rumors of wars, as when you hear of wars, or in this case here, they don't even put the word rumors in there. When you hear of wars, and literally it says, and a company of armies that are supposed to keep from spoiling without... And or, or excuse me, it's supposed to keep from spoiling what is to come, but it will not be the end yet. Now that really took me by surprise, but it's a company of armies that is supposed to keep those things from basically to keep the they're basically the, 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 these armies, this company of armies, are going to try to keep the end from happening, right? They're going to try to prevent all this mayhem from going on. Maybe even the idea of Gog of Magog, the wars like that. And I couldn't help but think of NATO. When I read that scripture, it reminded me so much of NATO. And the dog just barges into my office as if she owns the place. And she is now going to growl and tell me she wants out the other door. She can wait. Anyway, so as I was looking at that, then we come back. And of course, before I go into that, I also want to just share with you too from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child. And they shall not escape, but ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Going back to Matthew 24, we hear of that wars or rumors of wars. But that company of armies is supposed to try to keep from all this calamity from happening. But the end is not yet. Verse 7, nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There will be great tumults or riots, we should say. Grievous famine and earthquakes in various places. Well, I'm sure the riots are going to be as a result of famines. All of these are the beginning of sufferings. They, then they will bind you over for tribulation and will kill you, and you will become a reproach uh, to all nations for my name's sake. Then many will be perturbed, deal treacherously with each other, and be enraged among themselves. False prophets will arise and lead many astray, which is exactly what they're doing to put your eyes all on Israel as the only way to bring about a global peace in the world, right? And this gospel, that is, Evangelia, will be preached to all the earth for a witness concerning me to all the nations, and then the end will come. This is the Antichrist, and this is the abomination which desolates, which is spoken by Daniel as standing in the holy place. Let the one who reads understand. Then those who are in Judea, let them flee to the mountains. And he who is on the house taught, let him not come down anything to get any or to take anything out of his house. And he who is in the field, let him not turn back to take his garment. Woe to those who are pregnant and to those who are nursing and children in those days. Pray to God that your flight not be on the Sabbath day, because then there will be great distress 
which has not been from the creation of the world until now, as will not be, except those days were few, no flesh would be saved, but for the sake of the chosen, those days will be few. We are no doubt living in that such a time. Same thing as what we find over here, find over here in Thessalonians. It comes as a sudden destruction. And know those armies, as we just corrected the Hebrew part of that, uh, for the English, I should say, it's not going to do much much of any good anyway. Right? So, let's take real quick, though. I want to share with you some of the things that Tucker says here. Listen to this right here. Every single outlet along the entire spectrum of our national news media. These are the two essential themes of the war in Ukraine. And both of them are lies. We know that they're lies because late last week, leaked intelligence about the war in Ukraine began to appear on social media. Briefing slides prepared by the U.S. government began to show up, among other places, on Twitter. And the slides show that this is, in fact, not Ukraine's war. It's our war. The United States is a direct combatant in a war against Russia. As we speak, American soldiers are fighting Russian soldiers. So this is not a regional conflict in Eastern Europe. This is a hot war between the two primary nuclear superpowers on Earth. And yet this war has never been formally declared. It has not been authorized by Congress. And for that reason, this war is a violation of American law. It is a crime. And I don't think they really care. Unfortunately, Tucker, they don't really care. Now, if you guys will recall this here, the U.S. military fighting in Ukraine, um, we had published this video here seven months ago uh, and in this video here you can see where we're showing you U.S. soldiers on the ground in Ukraine uh, uh, and ah, fighting in Ukraine so, um, so everything looked the same. Everything it is too. definitely left, American fine, fighting right, in Ukraine right, Michael there, Zafar there, right, uh, who is also right. bringing this out and and it's not just, uh, in fact, now it's worse than it was then, seven months ago, because now we have the Abrams tanks inside of Ukraine, which we had shared with you through the intel that we had, that it would be American troops that would be running the Abrams tanks. So as we are hearing, too, that one out of, uh, in fact, Tucker actually brings that out on his uh, broadcast here. I'm not sure if I can remember exactly where it is, but he says in here that uh, for every Russian soldier that is killed, there are seven Ukrainians killed. Well, we might as well put that as NATO forces because there are a lot of NATO forces being killed. Let me see if that's in this area right here. Stand or North Korea. Well, it would take a police state and it would end in civil war. No sane person wants either one of those. I'm sorry, this is where he talks about the disarming of this nation. Uh, so we won't get into that as of right now. But he does speak in there and he speaks about there would be, there are seven Ukrainians for every one Russian that are killed. Basically seven NATO troops that are killed for every one Russian that is killed. It is It has become a slaughterhouse in the country over there clearly without any any doubt whatsoever another situation that's popped up too that tass is bringing out situation around uh zarf Zaif, i can't really pronounce that word correctly mpp becoming potentially dangerous uh this is the nuclear power plant over there inside of ukraine russia is actually operating one of those uh power uh power stations there and they're talking about that there is steadily shelling and bombing going on in and around this power plant. That creates a problem. And one of the other things that I was told is that if for some reason Russia were to lose a war, and they, or in this case here, Ukraine bombs this plant in some way and causes this thing to go offline, and it's not shut down properly, it would create a meltdown, which would create a no man's land once again between Russia and that of Europe, or at least through Ukraine. And this is something that Russia is willing to do if in the event they feel like they're going to lose the war. And as of right now, they've actually the ones that have the upper hand on the war. Uh, this is also uh, spoken about, let's see. Um, yeah, here, here's another example right here. This is from the Strana.best news. It says here, expectations are Ukraine, uh, from Ukrainian counteroffensive over uh offensive are overstay, uh, overestimated and could lead to disappointment, says Rezin, Rezinikov, who is the defense minister of Ukraine. Uh, he said, most people are waiting for something big, which can lead to an emotional disappointment. Western partners 
told me that now they need the next example of success because we have to show it, uh, it to our peoples. But I cannot tell you what the scale of this success will be. 10 kilometers, 30 kilometers, he goes on to say, 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers. Ideally, the offensive should cut the rear lines of Russian troops and reduce the offensive capabilities. But, but the, uh, the minister said, but he's already saying that it doesn't look like they're going to meet the expectations that everybody's hoping for, regardless of how much troops and equipment is brought into Ukraine. So that's a big problem going on as well in the country. Uh, another news that uh, Strano.best is reporting too: the gunpowder warehouses caught fire uh, in the Svordlovatsk region of the Russian Federation. According to the video that they're showing right here, these wildfires that are going on over in Russia, this is by a gunpowder plant. There have been other different types of uh, uh, catastrophes that have broke out in Russia as well. Uh, in the mid-April, residents of the southern suburbs of Kazan reported a fire near a tank range. And then also on April the 10th, a large-scale fire broke out in Moscow region at a spare parts warehouse. Uh, whether or not these are done intentionally or not, who knows? At this point, we don't really know for sure. Anyway, U.S. prepares express weapon delivery for Taiwan. Now, that is an interesting take. And by the way, we are going to be covering the King Charles III, his uh, coronation. I uh, spoke with a sister on the phone just recently about this. She was sharing with me with when Queen Elizabeth was uh, crowned in the original video. If you go into there, I think it's like to the uh, one hour and 49 minute mark of her coronation and everything that there was the uh, the allegiance to Israel that was in there. And she was fully expecting that to be the same thing in the coronation of uh, King Charles III. So we're going to be looking into all of this very soon. So I just want to mention that while we see his picture up there on the screen. Anyway, though, the United States $500 million shipment would be reportedly be the first time Washington has used the expedited Ukrainian style mechanism, this time for Taiwan. Uh, but on Friday, Chinese Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Mayo Ning accused the U.S. of turning Taiwan into a powder keg, which she said only spells trouble for our Taiwan uh, compatriots. Uh, Beijing, which considers the island to be an, an, ir, uh, an alienable part of its territory seized by separatists, urged Washington to stop uh, arms sales to Taiwan and warned of consequences. Washington has authorized multiple weapon deals with Taiwan in recent years, including a major sale of F-16 fighter jets. However, quite a few of these deals have yet to come to fruition, resulting in a backlog of sales totaling of $19 billion, a figure cited by Congress, uh, Congressman Mike Gallagher in February. Uh, yeah, too many orders to fill and no doubt not enough of the... Uh, not enough parts and stuff because of all the other backlogs. Hal Turner is also reporting the British Army General Britain has only 22 hours of ammunition for war. I suppose if that's a war breaks out that brings uh, Britain into a battle, uh, that's going to cause them some really serious problems. British General Rupert Jones publicly stated today we have ammunition for only 22 hours of great war of a great war. He warned that Great Britain and all his allies are extremely unprepared for a serious war. Yeah, go ahead and tell the Russians all you want. Let them know, China and everybody else, that you're going to lose your behind. Boy, that's some real strategic talk, isn't it? What else do you want to let the public know? Well, we'll help you get it out anyway, just in case that's something that you're trying to do. Uh, I don't know if I would have actually been willing to go out and say something like that if I were he. Uh, this right here I thought also was kind of interesting here. Leaked clear video of a fighter jet encountering a UFO over Alaska. And I, I did find this footage very interesting here. I want to just share this with you. Uh, the pilot showing this footage here. I don't, I don't know how it got out. It's small. It's small. I don't know, kind of like a, a or something. It actually, in my opinion, it kind of makes me think that, uh, you know, extraterrestrial entities are using uh, drones so to speak because the pilot talks about how small this object is he said he's not sure if it's metallic or not it is this shape you'll see a little bit better as it goes by let me just see if I can pause it there We'll see if we can't pause this as it passes there. Let's see. 
There it is right there. It looks almost like a hat, doesn't it? Anyway, that's the object that he caught there. It is small. And I'm, I have really come to the opinion that uh, uh, extraterrestrials or fallen angels are also using drone-type devices uh, uh, to also go out and look at things because definitely it appears to be way too small to be anything of significance there. At any rate there, that's some of the news headlines that we're looking at right now, friends. Uh, you have a blessed evening. I hope, too, that biblically you realize it looks like almost like a NATO force when we're looking at the Hebrew Matthew on this. Uh, I thought that was very interesting there when we get to verse 6 there. And um, so I just thought I'd share that with you. I'm busy working on translating things, so I looked at that, and I thought, wow, that is interesting. It is an army, uh, a company of armies. Literally, that's exactly what it says. That's right there is a word for armies. I uh, can't get it in there. Hey, uh, uh, Tzadi Vav, uh, Aleph Vav Tav, uh, which is Hatzavot. And right there before that is the word for companies, a company of armies. So you will hear, you will hear about, uh, you know, a company of armies. And they're going to try to prevent something from happening. But the end is not yet. It's an interesting concept. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Thank you for watching. Have a blessed evening. And uh, tomorrow will be also loading a new video over on our Patreon channel that I'm sure will be a blessing to many of you. Uh, I think the one we did on Nimrod there, if you haven't seen that already, I think that that has certainly been an eye, uh, eye opener for many people as well as we shared the story of Nimrod, the Tower of Babel, and what it may actually be. Check that out. It'll be in the description below so you know how to get to our Patreon channel, as well as we'll post the video here of Tucker here on uh, Elon Musk's channel there. I thought it was interesting. There's not a lot of comments on there, but yet 415,000 views. Hmm.